In this, the final session, session six, I'll show you some pro podcast audio production techniques, including using favorites to speed you up in Adobe Audition, ducking music when you talk in a podcast, recording and syncing double-ender podcasts with guests over Skype and the telephone, also adding extra special effects that we all love, like reverb, echo, and chorus, a quick look at how to organize your media browser, and then I'll introduce you to exactly how I would go about creating a podcast intro or a transition jingle for a podcast. Let's start, though, with favorites. Now, as you've seen in earlier sessions, you can EQ, you can compress a voice, you can normalize it, and perhaps I want to do all of those things at once to a voice, like I want to equalize it, then I want to normalize it, then I want to compress it, and then after that I want to normalize it again. That's going to take me a long time to do those four processes over and over again, so I've made it faster. I've recorded a favorite by heading into the Favorites menu, clicking Start Recording Favorite, and as you can see, it's not very visible, but down here... It suddenly lights up and tells me it's recording all of my actions now in Adobe Audition. So I'm going to go through and add some effects. First of all, I'll go to the Effects menu and I'll select Filter and EQ, Graphic Equalizer. And when I get that on the screen, I'm going to select Mic Sparkle and apply it. Next, I'm going to go into the Effects menu, Amplitude and Compression, Normalize and click OK. And there we go, that's done. Next, back into the Effects menu, Amplitude and Compression, Dynamics Processing, and I'm going to select My Preset, Mic Compressor, and click Apply to that. And then again, I'll need to go back into the Effects menu, Amplitude and Compression, Normalize, and click OK. And that's all of my effects that I want to apply. And that's now all of the effects that I wanted to apply put onto that one voice. So now I can go back into Favorites and stop recording the Favorite. And I'll call it Vocal Enhancer. And then click OK. And then that is now saved into my Favorites menu. Notice it there, Vocal Enhancer. And when I click that Favorite, it immediately applies those four effects that I just did for you in the blink of an eye. And notice you can also assign a hotkey to that vocal enhancer as I've done there. V will trigger off all of those actions for you. Now I'm going to show you how to duck music when a voice comes in. Let's go into the multi-track, start a new session here, call it ducking and click OK. On to track one, I'm going to record that voice that I just processed. Have a listen. Using favorites can speed up your editing in Adobe Audition. Now I'm going to head over and drag in my disco jingle, which is the introduction to the podcast. Using favorites can speed up your editing in Adobe Audition. Now notice the music is rather loud and it definitely needs some ducking. Now you can do this manually by just adding envelopes here and fading the music down and that'll sound fine. Using favorites can speed up your editing in Adobe Audition. But how about getting a compressor to do it for you? Well, this is how you'd go about doing that. Go into track two, first of all, and add an effect to the effect rack, amplitude and compression, dynamics processing, and the effect you want to go for is soft limit to minus 24 dB. It's a preset, but make sure you go into the settings menu. And then for output gain, you want to turn that right the way down, perhaps to around minus six or seven dB to give it a bit of headroom to work. Once you've done that, and then you want to head to track one here, click into a sidechain, create it, and associate it with the dynamics processing that you just added to track two. So let's do that, and now let's play it back. Using favorites can speed up your editing in Adobe Audition. And lo and behold, automatically you've got the music ducking when the voice comes in. And just to show you visually how this works, if I click into the mixer view of the multi-track, Watch the different channels as I speak. You'll notice the music channel, which is track two, will be lower, and then when I stop speaking, it will raise up. Watch. Using favorites can speed up your editing in Adobe Audition. And that's called sidechain compression, and is fantastic if you've got a lot of talking going on and you want the music to keep ducking up and down in between your speech. Now let's move on to recording a double-ender podcast, which is where you have the host speaking in one location and you've got a guest maybe the other side of the world on Skype or on the telephone. Let me demonstrate how I'd set up Adobe Audition to prepare to record for this. First of all, I'd go into the file menu, new audio file here, and let's call it double ender and click OK. Now, I need to go into the preferences of Adobe Audition by hitting command and comma like so. You can also access preferences by hitting the audition menu and there it is, preferences. You can even go right into where you need to go which is audio channel mapping. See it here? Audio channel mapping. 
Now, depending on your audio interface, you'll have different options here. But for me, Sapphire Input 1 is my microphone, and I can drop down here and get Sapphire Loop 1, which is the loop back of any audio that plays on my Mac. So left-hand channel, Sapphire Input 1, that's my microphone. Right-hand channel is Sapphire Loop 1, and that's any audio that plays from the Mac, which means I can record myself speaking on the left channel and my guest on the right channel. Let's click OK, start recording. Hello. And then I'm going to go to Skype and do a test call with Echo123, Skype's test calling service. Hello. Welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Hello, this is Mike calling the Skype test call line just to see how it works and that it's absolutely ample for my double ender needs. Hello, this is Mike calling the Skype test call line just to see how it works and that it's absolutely ample for my double ender needs. Now you'll see there a full recording on the left hand side. It's just me speaking. And then I'm going to go to Skype. And on the right hand side, it's the lovely Skype test call. Welcome to Skype call testing service. Here's the double ender I prepared earlier. My audio, which is me speaking here on the left hand side and my guest on the right hand side. And then if I get my guest's audio, and of course I ask my guest to record this at their end, I get just the audio that they recorded, which I can then go ahead and mix together in the multi-track. Let's create a new multi-track session. There it is. And I'll drag in first of all my guest to track one and then my audio to track two. Notice the guest is quite quiet, so I'm gonna go into their audio and I'm just gonna hit the N key to normalize all that audio. Now back into my multi-track and I just need to zoom in and make sure that the audio is properly aligned. You'll see down here, this is the Skype call and up on the top track is the quality audio that I'm trying to sync up. So let's zoom right in and get accurate with this. Now, to find out if I've done my job correctly, it should sound like the guest is kind of out of phase or a little bit echoey when I play back. I really do see that the, the sport is going to continue to grow tremendously. And there you go. You can see it's all synced. Now, on track two, I only want my audio, which will be the left-hand side of the audio. So I'm going to use the stereo balance here and drag it all the way down to be L100, which is 100% left. And now you won't hear any audio from my guest if I solo this track and play it back. All you could hear there was maybe a little bit of echo coming from my headphones, but no audio from the Skype call itself. Now I'll take that off solo and I'm going to combine both of those tracks onto a single track in exactly the same way as I demonstrated earlier by going to track and then add mono bus track and then I need to go into my inputs and outputs and assign both of those tracks to bus A. So that's the first one and then the second one. And now you should hear that both tracks are combined onto one channel. I really do see that the, the sport is going to continue to grow tremendously. Nick, that you know of. And finally, I might want to just add a little bit of compression. So let's go to some processing that I've made up earlier. Take the output down a little bit. And let's listen now to the whole interview with some processing. I really do see that the, the sport is going to continue to grow tremendously. Nick, that you know of, are there... And you'll notice there's a little bit of my breath on the recorded side. So I can just simply edit that out and put in fades. If I zoom in, it's that little grey box that you can use to add a fade to the end of any audio. And let's listen to how that edit sounds now. And it's on TV every weekend. I really do see that the, the sport is going to continue to grow tremendously. Nick, that you know of. And that is exactly how you'd sync up a double-ender conversation in the multi-track of Adobe Audition. Finally, to wrap up, I'll show you exactly how I put together a podcast intro jingle. But before I do that, I just want to show you quickly my media browser and how I organize everything that I've got, which is quite a lot of audio content.
I've got Christmas stuff, Halloween stuff, many volumes of audio production effects. If I click into maybe the first volume and the beds, you'll see that I like to go and categorize them by other beds. Rock beds, effects again are all categorized by BP, good enders, long stuff. So I know exactly where my audio is. You can use this workflow yourself when you're organizing your podcasts in Adobe Audition. I have a podcast directory and each podcast I work on has its own separate numbered directory that corresponds to the episode. Now I'm going to start a new multi-track session and show you exactly how I'd create a podcast intro ID for Cliff Ravenscraft. First I'd head to track one, enable it for recording, and start recording. This is the best podcast ever with Cliff Ravenscraft. Take that off recording now, go into the effects rack, and I'm going to add some processing to my voice with my processed preset. This has a little bit of reverb on as well, so you'll hear that. This is the best podcast ever. Next, I'm going to want to add multiple effects to this voiceover. So I'm going to, so I'm going to start cutting the waveform here and here and here. And then I'm going to drag this down onto track two and perhaps this down onto track three. And finally drag this in a little bit. Now, track two, I'm going to go into my effects rack. And first of all, I'll add that processing again to track two. And in my fourth empty rack, I'm going to go into modulation, chorus, and add a little bit of bass chorus. So now you're going to hear that effect applied when it goes to track two. This is the best podcast. And then I want to maybe do another effect to the item on track three, which is ever. So first of all, I'm going to add processed again. And I'm going to double up by copying onto different tracks the same audio. You do this by right clicking at the top of your audio and dragging it down to another track. And then you click copy here. And now let's play that back. Ever. And then finally, I'm going to grab this ID here with Cliff Ravenscraft, drop it onto track six, and I'm going to add my processing effect. And then I'm going to go into filter and EQ. And I think I'll go for FFT filter put that to default, select about here, chop off all the bass uh, with Cliff Ravenscraft. And that's done nicely. Now I'm going to zoom out again. Let's listen to the voiceover on its own. This is the best podcast ever with Cliff Ravenscraft. Next, I'm going to introduce some audio and effects from my media browser. So first of all, let's go into BP and bring in some BP effects. <laughs> That could be quite a nice start for the podcast intro, so let's do that. This is... And now I'm going to put in another track because I'll need another track here. And that's done. And then I'm going to look for some music here. Let's bring in some music. This is... This is... The... 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 the and now I'm going to put that audio on the beat of the track, like so. Just need to move that little audio along there. The best podcast ever. And finally, I'll get another effect to finish that off. Let's find something, maybe a rewindy effect here. Chop off the end of that bed. Bring the rewind effect in. Close that down. And now let's listen to the full podcast intro ID. This is the best podcast ever with Cliff Ravenscraft. And that's just a short example of how I'd put together a very simple podcast ID in the multi-track of Adobe Audition. I hope this webinar has been handy to you and that you've learned plenty that you can take away and implement yourself in your own podcast production. Thanks to Cliff for inviting me to come on and thank you very much for your time. Just to let you know, if you'd like to learn more about Adobe Audition and what I do on a daily basis here at Music Radio Creative, then head over to my YouTube channel. You can find it at youtube.com slash music radio creative. That's youtube.com slash music radio creative.